You know, obviously with the news uh, this morning, Miss Amy um, informed Coach Vrabes that he would no longer be the head coach here. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Vrabes for what he's done here the last uh, six years, uh, particularly the time that we've spent together. Um, you know, I want to thank Jen and Carter and Tyler for their sacrifices, um, for allowing him to put in the time that he put in here while here is our head coach. Um, I also want to say, you know, I know there's been a lot of speculation over the last, you know, two, three months or whatever it's been about the nature of Mike and I's relationship. I will say that Mike and I, we've never had any issue versus whether it's personal or professional. Uh, we worked well together um, and had a good relationship. Uh, we were in lockstep. Uh, so I want to finally come out and, you know, dispel that. And, uh, you know, I wish Vrabes, you know, nothing but the best. I uh, consider him a friend. And I feel like we'll be that way moving forward. And so with that said, I'll open up for questions. Rand, you said when, when at the draft or when, when you were introduced that your number one thing was to serve Mike. Given, given today's developments, did you fail at that? Uh, I don't think we failed. I just think, um, you know, um, one of the things Mike's always says is that the ball isn't round. So you don't know how it's going to bounce. You know, and I don't think the uh, the ball bounced our way. You know, we were in, uh, we had seven one-score losses. Um, this year. So we were in games, just the ball didn't bounce our way. I wouldn't consider it a failure, but by no means, you know, were we happy uh, with the results. Um, you know, and that's just something we've talked about, you know, privately and as a group over the last uh, couple months of, you know, how do we get this thing right? And how do we get this thing, you know, in the right direction? So I wouldn't call it a failure, you know, but it's definitely not up to the standard. You mentioned yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, uh, philosophically, um, like I said, back in, uh, in, I think it was my press conference, our football foundations are generally the same in where he cut his teeth and how I was raised uh, to see the game of football. Um, you know, realistically, it's only so many ways that you can play the game of football, only so many different schemes. Um, like I said, our, our visions were aligned. You know, we saw it a lot the same, and we worked well together. So where's I mean, the disconnect? I guess right? I meant, I'm sorry, sorry, Buck, sorry. Yeah. I guess what I meant there was in terms of where the franchise was, rebuild versus, you know, still trying to win another year. Yeah, well, I think that part, you know, it's a, a lot of moving parts, you know, to the game of football. Um, and there's no secret, you know, we've dealt with a lot of injuries here, you know, over the last, you know, three seasons or whatever it is. And, you know, we're having to mix and match pieces, you know, on a week-to-week on -week basis. Um, and it, it makes it hard. It makes it hard for, for any organization, you know, to do that. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us of trying to, you know, figure this whole thing out and how we can keep, you know, our key guys out there on the field and keep them available. Um, but it was just one of those things. It wasn't a – uh, we weren't aligned or it, you know, it didn't work. It's, it's, it's really hard when you take the field, you know, I think we took the field Sunday with nine starters out, you know, and, you know, we were able to come away with a victory. But if you look over the last couple of weeks, look how many starters, you know, that we've had out due to injuries. And it's, it's just hard. It's hard to win football games in the National Football League as is with a healthy roster. It's just it, it becomes even harder you know, when you don't have, you know, all your key guys. So along those, Rand, along those lines, Rand, 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 along those lines. Mike Vrabel doesn't have a job today. What, what is the disconnect there? Well, I think, I think Amy spoke to her decision, you know, of making, uh, you know, of the decision she made and why. Um, and that was about, you know, her long-term vision, you know, of the organization. Um, and, and, and that's really, I think, what it was. You along the lines of all the, uh, you talked about the season and being philosophically aligned and all. But, uh, in that regard, a couple of big big moves were made in season. The switch from Tannehill to Levis at quarterback, the firing of Greg Aukerman. Was everybody was that a were those unanimous decisions by the organization at the time? Yes, every every decision that we made was unanimous. Uh, Mike and I we speak every morning, um, whether I come to his office or he comes to my office, and we talk about the task at hand for the day. Uh, when we got to the point of. Um, of making the move uh, from Ryan. Um, at that time, when we made the, the initial switch, Ryan was injured. And that was about, you know, now we get to see what Levis can do. Um, and Levis went out and he played, he played well. Um, I think had everybody, you know, in this room and our fan base excited about what was to come. And so we decided to make the decision to, you know, move forward and see what that's going to look like in the future and, uh, in his development. Did Amy have a say in those decisions? We consulted with Miss Amy. One thing about Miss Amy is, you know, she hired us to do a job and she allows us to do our job. I think in your 
introduction, you said that the number one item on your to-do list was collaborating with Mike. How do you feel like you did it, achieving that and not achieving that? Like I said, we, we worked well together and we got along and, um, and I feel like our collaboration was fine. Um, and so again, I, whether it's, you know, in, in that given time when I spoke to uh, the press conference and I said I wanted to, you know, serve Mike, you know, serve this coaching staff, you know, that's going to be the philosophy moving forward. You know, no matter who our next head coach is, who our coaching staff is, our job and personnel is to serve them and, and, to, and to, you know, to provide them with players, you know, that they want to coach and that fit their scheme, you know, and I think that's the nature of the position. The, the general manager position um, isn't like what it used to be. You know, I think back in the day, the GM ran the business side. He did everything, you know, and, and this is more uh, the, the philosophies of, of you see these teams that are still playing. They're more in the collaborative, you know, sphere of, of both the head coach and GMs working together. Video, and you said that some consideration at least was given to a trade of Mike Vrabel. Can you elaborate on that? And was he ever directly asked if, if he would be part of a, a trade? Uh, I don't know the nature of his conversations uh, with Miss Amy about you know him being traded. Um, I do understand the question about a trade. It's just not as simple um, and cut and dry. And you look over the history is, um, of coaches being traded. It's just not a lot in recent times. And when you say recent times, uh, I know Sean Payton was just traded for, but he was out. You know, and New Orleans had a had a coach in place. Um, but there's also league mandates and rules that you have to follow you know, before you can execute a trade. And, um, you know, you have to, the partner, uh, if you will, uh, would have have to go through an exhaustive uh, process and meet the Rooney rules and all those qualifications. Um, and before we could even start interviewing, we have to have an opening. And so it just prolongs our ability to get the next and best head coach in here. What's the process, what's, what's process going to be like in hiring a new coach and who, all, who will be involved in that? So we're going to, you know, hit the ground running. Um, you know, obviously this is um, – I'll give you a little, you know, just to go back a little bit. You know, um, I just finished meeting with um, our operations staff, our support staff. Uh, I met with each uh, assistant coach individually. I uh, didn't want to do one big fail swoop of, you know, talking to those guys. I wanted to give those guys indiv uh, individualized attention. And so that way they can ask questions that they might want to ask about themselves specifically. So I uh, made sure I made the time to go around it uh, – in and talk with each one of those guys. Uh, but we're going to run an exhaustive process, uh, process uh, to find our next head coach. Um, and it's going to involve, you know, a lot of people. Um, you know, I, obviously I'll be a part of that. You know, Miss Amy will be a part of that and others. Um, you know, but we want to, you know, make sure that we're getting the right people in here. You know, I, I think it's, it's going to be well documented. And I know you guys will, you know, do your due diligence and, you know, let us know what you think of every candidate, you know, that comes out. Um, but we also have to make sure that we're getting the right people in here, you know, and people that everyone in this building, you know, wants to come in and work for. You know, collaboration, how did your collaboration determine that the group of offensive linemen that were on this team this year was sufficient to protect the quarterback and to create a run game? No, I was, a, you know, obviously, a, you know, one of the voices of it, you know, and I know that's an area where, um, you know, we didn't play as well um, and we, we need to continue to um, look for ways to improve that and we will um, and that'll be, you know, a part of the process as well. Um, but one thing I will say, um, you know, about that offensive line position, offensive line position isn't always about the individual, it's about the sum of the parts. Um, and we had a lot of injuries there. That was one of the positions that we had a lot of injuries. And so bringing guys, moving guys around, you know, guys like Dylan Radins playing guard, playing tackle, moving guys around, we, you know, it's just we weren't able to create that cohesion, you know, amongst the group. If you look at some of those great offensive lines back in the day, the, you know, the Denver Broncos line back in the, you know, in the late 90s and, you know, the uh, the Hogs um, in Washington, those guys had cohesion. Those guys work well, you know, together, and we just weren't able to keep the same five guys on the field consistently. So you, think the group, the, uh, you think the group was good enough if, if it was healthy? I think the group uh, could have played better if it was healthy. Um, and, and play together. Again, we know we're going to always look to add, you know, competition. And, you know, trust me, we didn't go into it feeling settled at any position. We're always looking to add. And, you know, throughout the summer, we were able to add other pieces and work out players. Some guys we weren't able to agree to terms with that probably could have helped us. But through that, we, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, find a, a Chris Hubbard and guys like that. So, you know, the name of the game in this business is keeping a quarterback upright. 
and we didn't do one second and we didn't do a good enough job of doing that and and I definitely had a, a part in that and so that would be one of our top tasks sorry and what are the two or three characteristics that you're going to look for in the next head coach um in all fairness I don't want to you know go into that uh, right now, specifically, uh, I promise you, um, you know, at a given time when we're, you know, up here, um, you know, introducing the next head coach, I'll, I'll go into that. But I think right now is best for us to keep that tight, you know, what I mean, amongst ourselves um, as we go through our process. Is it though to make sure that you are getting a coach that is going to be able to work with what seems to be the future of your franchise and quarterback, Will Levis? to make sure that that is right more than anything if this is the guy you're moving forward with as, as your quarterback. So, um I mean, all, I think all positions are important, and I get the, you know, the nature of the quarterback position and what it means to not only our franchise but to the league as well. Um, you know, I, sh I share with you guys, um, you know, before Levis's first start, and I became like a mantra, you know, for me um, to tell him, you know, I told him you, you don't have to be number one, you just have to be number uh, one of 11. You know, and so we're not going to, you know, make our whole search about, you know, Will Levis. You know, we have other guys on this team um, that are going to require coaching. They're going to require development. Um, but, you know, we will bring someone in here that's, you know, sees it the same way and, be, and is more than willing to work with him. It sounds, like, it sounds like you were not in the present in the room when Amy talked to Coach Rabel this morning of his firing. How much is that true? And how much say did you have in the final decision to part ways with Coach Rabel? Uh, no, I was not in the room um, uh, when, the, when the news was delivered. Um, and these, these things are ultimately, you know, Miss Amy's uh, decisions. Um, I think um, organizationally structured, we both report to her. Um, and, you know, I know they've always had their, you know, their one-on-one -on -one conversations as I have, you know, with her throughout the year and just throughout, you know, my time being here. Uh, so, no, uh, I wasn't present, um, but that's just the way it is. Did you, get, did you have any input at all? And what's your understanding of why Mike was fired? Well, um, like Miss Amy said in her statement, it's about her long-term vision you know, of what she wants uh, the organization to be um, and how she wants to move this organization, you know, forward. How did it work for, for nobody to have final say? It worked fine um, because, again, I, I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, with this group. You know, I, I see that as an as a ego-driven uh, part, you know, that can create dissension. And, you know, that's the his guy, my guy, you know, type of conversation. But, again, there was never going to be a player brought in here that we weren't in agreement with. Was it part of your agreement in the collaboration that Mike would face the music on everything difficult through the season and that you would be as invisible as you were? No, um, I think, well, to your point, because I, I know where we want to go with this, um, I was out front from the moment I got hired through the spring, um, you know, throughout that whole process. And I just felt like whether right or wrong, you know, and it's something for me to learn from as we move forward. Um, I just felt like the the fall should have been about you know the players and the coaches. Now, in terms of when it came to the the KB trade and why I was not out front on that, you know, um, Mike's had the relationship you know with Kevin over the last you know six years or whatever it, uh, it's been, um, and we felt like it was best for him you know to uh, to go out front and handle that. By out front, you, you I mean you had a few press conferences. What, what's what's out front? When you, when you say I had a few press conferences, are we talking in the spring or the fall? Spring and, and the fall. No, I, well, I was out front in the spring because that's, you know, that's roster acquisition time. Um, I don't particularly remember doing a press conference in the, um, in the fall, um, but uh, maybe I did one or two. At, yeah, I mean, you know, again, Paul, this is, uh, you know, my first year on the job, and I've had, you know, thoughts and processes that I thought would work best you know, moving forward. And I'm not here to say, again, like I said, it may not be right or wrong. And it's something that I need to evaluate, you know, moving forward and do a better job of connecting of Amy connecting said, with the fan base. Amy said in the video that she will name who has final say when the, once the process is over. So is your understanding then that this is changing? This yeah, I mean, again, it, it, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing where, you know, it's, it's an ego thing. You know what I mean? From my standpoint of saying I have to have it, it's whatever's best for this organization. You know, and we're going to do that. And no matter if, if if she says that I have final say, it'll be in a collaborative effort, you know, with the head coach. Like I, I firmly believe and I'll never deviate from it. We're not going to bring players in here that the coaches don't want to coach, you know. 
Oh, uh, no, go ahead. You got it. Okay, so a moment ago, you said the reason primarily he was fired was because of the vision that Miss Amy sees for this team. What was it about Mike that wasn't compatible with that vision? It's her vision for the for the organization, not the team. The vision for her organization and how she wants things structured uh, for that. Like I said, Miss Amy, uh, she's made her statement um, and she's clarified her reasons and we're here to support her. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, start it one more time. You, you mentioned how nobody's happy with the outcome of this season. How much blame do you put on yourself for a 6-11 season? I mean, uh, obviously I'm, I'm one of the pieces in the talent acquisition part, you know, so I, I wholeheartedly take a lot of the blame, you know, and I have no problems with that. Again, um, I've, I've been a part of losing seasons, you know, throughout my career, um, but I've been a part of some, you know, some really uh, – big winning seasons specifically these last couple of years and and so that's not a part of my nature I don't accept losing um you know you have the you know the piece out there well hey if you continue to lose you get a higher draft position I don't give a damn about a draft position I'm here to win football games and that's what I'll ultimately be judged on well you know again we have um we have to go through uh, league protocols um, and mandates um, that we have to meet um, as the people who will be new to the, the hiring process, um, you know, from a DEI perspective that we have to go through. Uh, so once we, you know, um, handle that part of the business, we'll, we'll get him started immediately um, in terms of who we want to uh, sit down with and, uh, again, start immediately. Um, I mean, you, you can speculate. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, again, Mike and I, we had, you know, private conversations yesterday um, as we met with players, you know, as we met with the players in one on one. Um, but, you know, I mean, you guys do a good job of keeping everybody informed. You know what I mean? And so it's something that you have to when you see it, you know, you have to give it a thought about what it is. And, you know, again, it's, it's unfortunate that um, we're sitting here today you know, having that conversation. Uh, I'll be honest with you, man. It's, uh, you know, going down and meeting with the uh, with the coaches one on one, you know, individually. Um, some of these guys that, you know, they're they're damn good ball coaches. And we're having this conversation under this, you know, under these circumstances. It's not easy. Um, again, like I said, I um, after I face you guys questions, I have to go home and answer questions. You know, um, some of you guys have seen my kids around. Um, you know, my, my daughter had a close relationship with Mike, you know, so I got to go home and answer these questions as well. So these days are never easy. Did Mike want more control in, in the process or at least a different structure set up? We never had those conversations um, because uh, Mike was a part of every every meeting that we ever had in terms of uh, talent acquisition. Uh, the way we did things last year from the moment I came in, we had a free agency meeting with the scouts. Um, and we were all in there. We had a meeting with the coaches. We were all in there, same thing for the draft process. So, again, n- no player came through here that our coaches did not see. How much of the talent acquisition? That, I, I, it's, it's football. You know, it's football, and it's, you know, it's 74 car crashes, you know, a day. Um, right, and, 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 Paul, that's a part that, that we have to figure out. We, we really do, and we have to spend the time to figure it out. Uh, Todd Torricelli and his, his uh, staff, you know, they do an excellent job of getting these guys back as soon as possible. Um, and that is, that is something is because it's something that's persisted over the last three years. And so we have to, you know, pay attention to that. And we will do that as we go through this process, you know, with the next head coach. Staff members or coaches be retained? How do you go through that process of, you know, maybe bringing anybody back? So, um, like I spoke with uh, the coaches today, um, m- my plan is to present our coaching staff, you know, to the next head coach and give him the, you know, the ability to um, interview any of the, the guys on our current staff if he, you know, if he sees so um, and go from there. If he needs, you know, advice or input from myself and from anyone here, we w- will do that. Um, but I have, you know, a ton of respect for those guys. And, you know, I kind of let you guys in on, you know, the nature of my conversation with them. Um you know, I let every coach know I appreciated the work that they put in, the work that they put in developing our guys, um, and that I wouldn't stand in the way 
if between now and the time we hire the next head coach of an opportunity came for them, you know, to continue to feed their family. Um, you know, again, would love for the next head coach to consider some of the guys because we have some talented guys on this staff, uh, but that'll be, you know, at the discretion of the next head coach. How much of the talent acquisition process that you and Mike did together last offseason was rooted in a multi-year vision? And with Mike no longer being a part of that process, how much does it pivot how your roster internally looks moving forward. Yeah, I mean, you always, when you're acquiring specifically younger guys, you know, draft guys and some young free agents, it's a long-term vision. You know, we, we talk a lot about it in the draft room of, hey, this guy may not be ready year one. You know, so that's a part of it. Um, and depending on the scheme of the next head coach, things could pivot you know, drastically, and we could have a, a retool of the roster, which is, you know, going to take some work. And so, uh, you know, we'll address that, you know, when we get there. Was the expectation coming into the season, knowing what you had on the roster, to contend for a division, or was there an expectation that it may take some time to do the full turnover that you guys No, the, the, with? the expectation, no matter when you put guys out there on the field, is to win the ball game, you know, no, no matter what. And, and that was our vision. Um, and so, you know, obviously it, it did not go that way um, for a variety of reasons, but the, the, the goal is to always win. You know, um, I think, you know, I know Mike's been a part of some championship teams and we know what that looks like and I have as well. Um, but, you know, we're going to moving forward, you know, we're going to we're going to work diligently to make sure um, that, you know, we, we're going to put the best product out there on the field. You you want collaboration, and isn't it important ultimately to have somebody have the final say on, on things like the 53 man? Again, I don't think, you know, I understand that and I, I can see where it, where it works. But again, we all have to be aligned, you know, on that. It's it's my job. It's Chad's job. It's A-Rob's job. It's all of our directors and scouting's job to identify the players that fit whatever it is we do schematically and then present that to the coaches. And the coaches have to, you know, want to coach this guy. Um, and so um, it's, no matter who has the final say, you know, it's going to have to be, you know, a collection of talent that makes that work. You know, um, when it comes down to there's a difference, you know, there's a difference of having 53 man control versus 48 man control on game day, you know, um, and those are two totally different things. And so, you know, the coaches know what they need, you know, to execute their game plan on game day. Why were you drafted an all America left tackle? Did the organization never look at him at left tackle as you struggled at left tackle? Well, I think the, the goal for Peter was to be the left guard and, um, you know, and, and moving him around from moving him from a new position to a position that he hadn't practiced, I don't think it was advantageous in his development um, and his growth because he was learning a new position. Um, you know, and from him, he yes, he came in. He was an All-American, um, you know, left tackle um, in college, you know, but I think and we talked about this with Peter the other day, you know, um, you know, at this league, there are bigger, longer players. And, you know, the length presents a problem now moving forward it you know, who knows? We may we may give Peter a look. Peter is a player that I would never bet against and say that he couldn't do something or he couldn't play. Uh, but we thought at the you know at the time when we drafted him that Peter we could put Peter at guard and he'll be a mainstay. There was never a time along the way while Tannehill and and Levis were getting hurt that that it made sense to take a look at him there, given the alternative. We discussed it. We discussed it, but moving Peter to left guard will have to put somebody at left tackle. I mean, uh, um, moving Peter to left tackle will have to put somebody at left guard, and then now we're going back to that part about the cohesion. It was easier to re replace one guy versus two. What do you have the long-term vision? Do you feel like that's your vision? It's ours. You know, I'm. I don't. I don't own this organization. You know, and we all have someone that that we have to answer to, and you know, we present our plan. You know, to uh, to Miss Amy and let her know, you know, how we want to move forward, um, and and that's the way it's going to be. She talked about, you talked about it, but no one's actually defined what it is. I think I think at the at the right moment we'll define that we'll define that vision, and that's going to come when we hire our next head coach, and we'll be able to give you give you guys more of a detailed description at that time. This might not fit the vision today. Well, again. Um, this was about Miss Amy's long-term uh, vision, and she stated in, in her statement how she felt. You mentioned the teams playing now have a certain way of going about things. How does how does that way, as you understand it, compare to how you guys did things this year, and what it will look like moving forward? I'm not following the question. The teams that are playing, that are still playing, have that sort of collaborative. Mm -hmm. 
way of going about things behind the scenes, right? I mean, right. I that's what yeah. Doing. So how does that, your understanding of what they do, mm -hmm. and I know you know one very well, compared to what you guys did this year and what you want to do from here? No, I think, you know, again, we, we're talking, you know, different circumstances uh, just in terms of, you know, a lot of those teams that are, that are still playing, they've, they've remained relatively healthy at key positions. Um, and we just weren't able to do that. Um, but again, moving forward, you know, we gotta we gotta diagnose whatever that reason is and why you know we haven't been able to keep you know the same eleven guys out there consistently. Are you continuing with leading, that, are, are you going to be leading the the head coaching search? And if not, how is it going to work? I know we you know um, talked about this earlier. You know, I will be one of the parts of it. Um, and there will be, you know, areas in which, you know, I'll take more of an out front approach. Um, but again, this isn't, this is about the head coach. This is about the locker room, but this is about the organization. So it'll be, you know, a few of us in there. Um, I know there are a couple candidates that, you know, I have, um, you know, out there that'll be available. I have relationships with, and I want to be able to run an unbiased, um, you know, uh, process. And so that, that's going to require more people to be, you know, in the room and a part of the process. In terms of teams that, that are still playing, a lot of them have more wide open, more dynamic offenses built around a quarterback. Is that a direction that you uh, would potentially like to go? You know, I mean, we'll, we'll see what the candidate um, pool list, you know, presents. Um, you know, obviously the – that's what everyone tunes in to see is, you know, points being scored and, and big plays. And so we want to be a well-balanced football team, you know, um, as we move forward. So um, however we get there is how we get there. If there's, a the part, you the search. if there's a candidate you recommend, do you expect Amy to accept the recommendation? Um, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's a vote, right? So we're going to – how many other people we decide to interview, we're going to interview. And I'm sure, you know, when it comes down to it, everyone will speak their piece about, you know, who they like, and I'm, you know, we're all going to listen to each other and, f and figure out who's best for us. You'll be taking part in the coaching search, and you could have final roster say, what makes you feel prepared to take on that larger role? You know, I was thinking about this, you know, as we, you know, move forward. Of, of course, I've never had to run a run or be a part of an interview search or interview a head coach. I've, I've never done it, you know, but then I lean on my experiences in growing up, you know, in a household raised by a coach. You know, and a lot of the coaches that I've been around, I've, you know, reached out to, you know, some of my, you know, friends around the league. Some are head coaches, some are GMs, you know, for advice, you know, already. Um, and so I'll lean on those, you know, those guys to help me in, in areas where I'm not experienced. What did you think about the degree of player development you saw over the season you were here? Um, I'm encouraged. You know, from, you know, you look at guys, um, you look at, I mean, Peter, like we talked about before, he's never played guard before. He stepped in and he was playing good ball. And even myself, you know, I forget that he missed a significant portion, you know, due to an appendectomy, you know, where he lost significant weight and he, you know, worked his tail off to get back, you know, to do that. So he was still kind of developing and growing. Um, you look at Will Levis, you look at, you know, I, Josh Wiley, I have to call him, by his real name and not the nickname we gave him. But, you know, all these guys, you know, showed improvement. Look at Colton Dow, you know, for him to come in, you know, as a seventh-round pick at receiver and, and earn a spot, you know, on um, on special teams. And Jalen Duncan, you know, and where he was, like, the, the development was very encouraging. We just have to keep that going. One thing that Mike Vrabel established here that really has been here since, you know, through ups and downs is the culture of that locker room. How big is it? for you to focus on? I know it's hard just to predict a coach maybe that for the first time that's coming in, but how big is that on your mind in terms of who you bring in to be able to establish a solid culture through ups and downs? Because it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to be key. You know, it's going to be key, and, and, and we need that, you know, at that voice, you know, out of that position. Um, but it also takes the guys in the locker room, so we're going to have to continue to bring the right guys in the locker room. I think we have – the right guys, you know, in the locker room and how they respond to things. And, you know, when everybody counted us out, you know, those guys go out there and fight. Um, you know, I think we were without, what, seven starters on defense, you know, the other day and, you know, was able to, you know, hold one of the one of the better and more talented offenses, you know, to uh, 20 points. So, um, you know, along with the head coach, we got to continue to uh, keep those type of guys in the locker room. I mean, Derek, Derek kind of approached Sunday as if it was his last game here. Is there a scenario where you maybe try to pursue him, or is that depend on maybe who the new head coach is? Yeah, well? that'll be a that'll be a, a new head coach 
the new head coach and, and I, you know, having a conversation. Um, I had a really good conversation uh, with Derek yesterday, you know, on the way out. And, um, you know, we had our conversation, which I'll keep between him and I, but, you know, the, the doors never close. Just to clarify, you said that you guys are going to define the vision once you get the new head coach in place. Do you think it's important to have, between you and Amy, that vision defined going into the coaching search or are you trying to define that vision based on who you hire no we have the division the vision defined we we have it defined and we've had you know you know i've been on the phone ever since you know the decision was made and it's it's obviously been a lot going on and it's been hectic but the, the vision is defined it's just it'll be a time for us to roll that out can you share that vision? Can no, it's it's, it's 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 not the time. It's not the time to to share that vision today. And, and I because I think as we go through this process, we need to to make sure that we have the right person aligned with that, and and why we hired that person will fit that vision. That's good. Um, man, how do you balance? Sorry. How do you balance knowing the free agency stuff you got to deal with the players and how this coaches? How do you? How do you make all that work at the same time? Uh, sleepless nights. Um, I have to, you know, go by the Target and get a pillow and a blanket and uh, sleep in my office and do whatever I need to do to do my part to help, you know, usher this organization forward, you know. Why is the scouting staff that was below John Robinson and led helped in part lead to the roster problems that you have now, the right scouting staff to help you rebuild the roster? Well, you know, Again, with everything, with this, with this change, we got to continue to look at, you know, at our scouting staff and what changes may or may not need to be made there. Uh, one thing, when I was hired, um, I didn't know any of these guys when I came in, and I wanted to give them a chance to prove themselves because I have never worked with them, and I didn't want to just come in and just gut the place and, and have to start over and do all of that. And so uh, we'll continue to, you know, um, evaluate all phases of the organization. Like, we have to – we have to get it right, and I, I, I'm confident that we will. Are with relationship Platform. building with the new head coach that you're going to want to do differently than you did with Mike, or the regrets, I guess, that, that you want to address? No, I don't have any regrets. Um, I think relationship building is all about you as an individual and how you do those. And, you know, I, I feel like with who I am as a person, like I, my life has been built on relationships and my, my ability to – uh, create and establish relationships with people. So um, I will continue with the same approach, you know, that I've always had. And I'm I'm the type of person that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have conversations. Sometimes are gonna be uncomfortable, but you know, but the best way to get on the other side is maybe having a 20 or 30 minute uncomfortable conversation. So um, I'm never gonna put myself above anybody. I'm gonna always make myself available, you know, to who uh, whoever that next person is. But um, in terms of how I communicate and how I go about my life, I'm, I'm not changing that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.